Hi everyone, just a quick video on how to use a current tester, or some people will call it an, an amp clamp. Obviously being a mechanic, I'll be looking at it from the perspective of a mechanic, but these are often used for uh, electric electricians with uh, properties uh, as well. So with this particular one that I've bought, and the first thing you want to look for is whether you're gonna need a, a DC um, amp clamp or not. Um, the cheap ones will do AC, which are perfectly fine if you're dealing with property electrics and anything to do with uh, AC voltage. So just a reminder, um, DC voltage is anything that comes from a battery. So again, as a mechanic, I'd be looking at uh, something that does DC because most of the systems on the car are going to run on DC. Uh, if you're dealing with household electrics, obviously you just need the AC because uh, AC travels a lot better over long distance. So uh, power stations supply electricity to a property in, uh, in, in AC. So uh, this one's DC. Um, so I'm just going to go through the settings and, and how to set it up. So first up, obviously, I'll turn it on to the first setting, which is volts. Normally on a multimeter or any other piece of uh, electrical testing equipment, the straight line represents, if you can see that, straight line represents DC and the wavy line is AC for alternating current. So we've got direct current and alternating current. Um, so whichever one you're going to do with that, that will be the, the, the voltage test to change it. We've got AC here and you just press select to move it to DC. So if I was using this effectively as a multimeter to do a, a voltage test on a car battery or any, any other component, then that will be the setting to do it on. Um, the next setting along, I'll mention as well, if I was doing that test, this bottom half is effectively a multimeter. So I've got my negative common earth, which would always go in TCOM uh, there. And then obviously I've got a positive lead here effectively, which is a red one, which if I'm doing volts would go volts. There's volts there, there's an Amiga sign, which means ohms, and there's a, a Hertz sign for uh, another setting later on. So I put it into that one. And then that is effectively now a multimeter uh, with those in that particular position there. So I could do my test that way. The next setting along shows Amiga and a diode symbol and a speaker. So that is ohms uh, and continuity. So I move to that one. It's exactly the same plugs for my two leads here. OL, so most multimeters will show OL, OL which is, is, uh, is telling us it's open loop. So an open loop circuit means there is no complete circuit. So if I put those two probes together, like so, I should get some sort of reading, which I do. So that's how much resistance between the, multi, uh, the amp clamp and right round through the two probes, the circuit's got 0.8 ohms worth of resistance. There's no hard and fast rule for how much ohms resistance wire should have. A very loose rule is one ohm per meter of wire, but the thicker the wire, the lower the resistance because the electrons are going to find it a lot easier to pass through. So uh, that's roughly uh, where to start when you're looking at it. So, yeah, so resistance uh, for that one. So this one is one that a mechanic wouldn't normally use, which is capacitors or capacitance. So if I was using this to test capacitors on electronic circuit boards or similar, then that's the setting I would have for that. Again, the probes would stay in the same place. You'd remove the capacitor and the capacitor would have a rating that you'd be able to check if you uh, work in that industry. And then obviously you would put those two probes across the capacitor and, and test it that way for how much resistance that particular capacitor has. The next one again will be for household electrics, that's Hertz. So the waveform of the AC voltage, the, the ripple as it's coming into your house needs to be tested sometimes as well. Um, and that can possibly cause damage to household electrical components if the if the frequency is too high. So again, I personally don't know the the range that of the hertz that you'd want through your plug, but it's the same setting for those who who do work in that industry. Those two in there, and then the two leads into the two plug socket holes, and you'll get the frequency of which the um, electricity is being provided to that socket. So the main reason that I use this as a mechanic is the next setting: it's ampage or current. Two settings exactly the same. There's, there's 600 rated up to and a thousand. Again, there's a straight line there which tells me that it'll do DC and a straight uh, a wiggly line there that will tell me that it'll do AC. So as a mechanic, again, most of the things you're going to be working on is DC apart from some uh, circuits that are active, uh, sensors that are active. But this is a brilliant way of testing current in a circuit without breaking into the circuit. With a traditional multimeter, what you'd need to do is plug in your leads, uh, disconnect the circuit uh, completely um, and then put the multimeter within the circuit so when you put it within the circuit 
uh, you then energize the circuit by turning on the light or the motor and then see the current passing through the uh, through the multimeter as part of that circuit so it will go in series with this particular system you don't need to do it so it's a lot safer and a lot quicker if you open up these jaws here and place your wire that you're testing within the uh, hall effect sensor area there it will pick up the current passing through it so it will go through there sense the current will give you a reading of how much current is going through there so a lot quicker and a lot safer way of doing it if you're testing for battery ampage or any other ampage for that matter a lot quicker and safer way of doing it it's rated up to a thousand amps uh, so it's safe to use on hybrid and electric cars as well so if you're ever looking to work in electric cars you do need one that's cat six, cat three here which is rated safely up to a thousand volts um some electric cars will be having parts of the system up to about 650 volts so you do need a cat three to safely work on one of those um again you've got the ac and the dc function uh, with this one as well you've got maximum minimum so if i want to know how what the maximum ampage is coming out of my battery i can put max or if i want to see how much discharge is happening how low it gets uh, i can obviously change it to minimum as well there's a duty cycle there for hertz so that would be the cycle rate at which it's coming through the plug uh, and that will give you a reading there and rel for this particular one is just a reset to zero in case you get any uh, residual like you're starting off with and that's just a light um, the other final setting is uh, just temperature which is what these two probes are for you plug the negative in TCOM and the positive in there and it just acts as a thermometer like anything else would so a really versatile piece of kit again as a mechanic it's particularly good for the current and the amperage because it does make it quicker and safer and gives you a, a reading straight away so would recommend uh, investing in one of these again do bear in mind this one's about 50 pounds if you're looking to buy one that's a 20 or 30 pound mark some of the wordings on the listings are not very clear the cheap ones will only do ac would only be good for domestic houses uh, and properties they wouldn't be any good for dc amps for anything that runs off a battery such as a car so make sure when you if you are going to invest in one of these that you um do your research and make sure that uh, it does do ac and dc if you're going to use it for a motor vehicle um reason hope that makes sense please do ask any questions in the comments below if if i've missed something or you'd like further explanation and uh, see you on the next video thank you